Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be showing that every ordered field must contain a countably infinite subset. Now this is exercise 1.1.12, which can be found in your free online real analysis textbook, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. Alright, let's do this. Let f be an ordered field. Now since f is an ordered field, that means I have two distinct elements, 0 and 1. Now since f is an ordered field, either 0 and 1 are the same, or 0 is less than 1, or 1 is less than 0. Now I want to mention that if x does not equal 0, then x squared is greater than 0. Now I'm going to just assume this, but just to remind everyone why x squared is greater than 0, regardless of whether or not x is positive or negative, the proof of this is pretty straightforward. You just work through the cases, either x is positive or x is negative. So that means that since 1 isn't 0, then 1 squared is greater than 0. But keep in mind, 1 squared is 1, because 1 times anything is whatever that thing is. Just remember that multiplying an element by 1 doesn't output a different element. So there we have it. 1 is greater than 0. So 1 is greater than 0. We can add both sides, whatever element we want. We could add, for example, 1 on both sides. Which would imply that 1 plus 1 is greater than 1. Now, I know it's tempting to say that 1 plus 1 is 2. But keep in mind, in an ordered field, there are different labels for different things in different fields. So it's really tempting to say that the answer is 2 here. But what if we're working in a field that involves matrices? And so the number two doesn't really make any sense in, in that context. So I'm just going to leave it as one plus one because that's what it is, one plus one. And then I can add one to both sides here to get that one plus one plus one is greater than one plus one. And then I can add one on both sides again to get that one plus one plus one plus one is greater than one plus one plus one. So then what we're showing is that 0 is less than 1, is less than 1 plus 1, is less than 1 plus 1 plus 1, is less than 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and so on. Now keep in mind that if I pick any two elements here, say this one and this one, then I can squeeze together the inequalities to show that 1 is less than 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 because of the transitive property. Now keep in mind, if you take any two elements in this long inequality, then either they're equal to each other or one of them is larger. But exactly one of those has to be true. But if I grab any two elements here, then I can just sandwich this inequality together to show that the element on the left is less than the element on the right. And this will always be true, which means that these two elements, 1 plus 1 and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, they're not equal. They're not equal. So if I pick any two elements in this chain of inequalities here, then I know they're not going to be equal. So all of these elements here must be distinct from each other. They have to all be different elements. And so now you could probably see where I can get this countably infinite subset. So let's define A. I'm going to define A to be 1 and then 1 plus 1 and then 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. Now I know it's tempting to say, oh look, hey, it's a countably infinite subset because of the dot dot dots, right? Well, not necessarily because what if I have repeating elements here? But keep in mind that if I have repeating elements, that means that I can pick two distinct elements in this chain of inequalities and show that they're equal, but at the same time I can sandwich them together to show that they're not equal, that there's a strict inequality that can be used to relate the two elements. And so either they have to be equal or not. 
One of the two. That's important. That's the trichotomy of inequalities. That's the whole point of an ordered field. And so that means that every element in A here is distinct. And so I'm listing out an infinite number of elements and they're all distinct, which means that I have a countably infinite subset. Now, I do want to be careful here because we are in the very beginning of real analysis. And so it's important to show the actual bijection to the natural numbers. So let's define that function from A to the natural numbers. And this is gonna be a bijection. Now, how do I define this function? Well, I take an element in A, which is gonna look like one plus one plus one multiple times. And I'm gonna send that element to N where n is the number of ones listed here. Now I claim that this function f is a bijection, which would then mean that a is a countably infinite subset. So how do you show a function is a bijection? Well, you gotta show that the function is injective and surjective. So let's let k be an element in the codomain, the natural numbers. So k is a natural number. Now I need to find an input that maps to that element K. Well, I can find that specific element by picking one plus one plus all the way up to plus one. And specifically I want K ones. This equals K according to our definition, which is what we wanted to show that if we pick an arbitrary element in our codomain, I can find an element that maps to that element in the codomain, which means that f, our function f, is onto, it's surjective. So now let's show that our function is one-to-one -one or injective. So let's assume we have two outputs that are the same. Let's label the inputs though as x, ones, and over here we have y ones and the goal is to show that the inputs are actually the same here well i can find what f of one plus one plus one plus one plus one is since i know that in this instance my output is going to be x and the second output i'm going to get y and so since x equals y that means that i have one plus one plus one plus dot 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 plus one as one input and the other input is one plus one plus one plus all the way up to one. But in this instance, I only have Y copies, but Y is X. And so that means that these two inputs are in fact the same here. And so my function is injective or one to one. And so that means my function is bijective. And that's what I wanted to show. That means that the size of A is equal to the size of the natural numbers, which is countably infinite. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.